We've characters from their book description. We've done villains from the book description. This time we're doing video game characters from their description. But where are we getting the descriptions from? Because they're not from book. Wikipedia, as it turns out, is a great source of descriptions of characters. And so my team picked a few characters, reviewed their Wikipedia article for me to design from. Whether I can guess them or not is irrelevant. I'm going to approach this as a design brief. We've done this before. Let's go. All right, gamers, let's do this naky jakey style. Character one is a middle-aged man. He is six foot four. Tall. He has a large, athletic, muscular frame with a red tattoo running up his upper body and onto his face. He has pale skin covered with grey, ash with a large scar on his abdomen and a large scar on his face over his right eye. He wears a fur cape and has fur-lined leather armour on his arm. He wears leather pants and sandals, has stunning hazel eyes, a bushy black beard, and he wields a spear. All right, time to hand it over to me from the past. That's a lot to remember. I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna. All right, there's my description. I'll just pop it over there. I think like we've done in the past, the best thing to do is just block it out. Now I jumped into, of course, creating the foundation that I'm gonna work on top of. But after roughing that in in a general way, I realized this is a video game. Like we can have way more fun here. Games get to take a lot more creative liberty in making stuff cool for the sake of cool. So I way intensified the athleticism and the build and the proportions, went a bit more edgy and cartoony, even leaning towards a sort of Spider-Verse inspired style to create something with a lot more visual interest. Now all I need to do is put our different props and pieces on top, the, the design elements that my description outlines. And the description is just dot points presented, but the approach I asked my team to take was basically to skim the Wikipedia articles and just find anything that describes visual features and put them together. So it is a really condensed description that I'm following, but it is everything that is by necessity described in a formal article on a need to know basis for this character. I don't know if this sort of speaks for itself. I've been really into playing Valheim lately, which is sort of fitting, you know, this is a video game themed video. When I say really into playing Valheim, really into playing Val. <laughs> I have anchored myself to pretty Nordic inspiration, which honestly ticks off a lot of this stuff, specifically the outfit, but this is all just a really scribbly foundation that I can just sort of sink into the background and do some more refined sketching on top of. Given that he's so scarred, he's probably had a few broken noses. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a bit of a misshaped, chunky nose. I feel like, uh, I mean, we're going Nordic. It's gotta, it's gotta start to turn into a little, little plait. It doesn't have to be a major thing. It says big bushy beard, not a big plaited beard. So I think just give him a little, just a little something. So we've got this really strong jawline accentuation with the beard. Why have a big bushy beard if it isn't making you look chunkier, you know? Sort of beard that comes with a sound effect. <laughs> High cheekbones, cause you know there's a handsome man under all that scars and facial hair. I always find, especially when you go big jaw. Small head, small forehead. There doesn't have to be too much going on up there cause it's all about what's going on in here. Okay, scar up here on the eye. It's not a lot of room for a tattoo. Let's let's look up some references. Ooh, let, do you know what? Let's do that. The half hair, the, that like, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna give him a haircut. And when that shape works well as a face tattoo, it's sort of like curving around the ear like this. So we can do some of these like Celtic weave pattern. I like this dude. He looks like uh, Zeus or Odin. He looks godly, that's for sure. Now I put down a light skin tone and it describes the character's skin as covered with ash. So I simply painted a light ash color on top of the skin tone, but just barely pressing the pen down, which would then create a color that I could pinch from that's a little more ashy than a generally light skin tone. With a bit of basic shading down, I went through blocking the rest of the color, roughing in little bits of shading, but I just wanna put the bulk of this character down in a way that's gonna feel like a concept art piece so that we can take it further from there. All right, I am really happy with how this is coming together and this red face tattoo is just the icing on the cake. I'm so happy with this. I'm gonna turn it into a bit of an in-studio collab. The very talented Alicia is gonna help me take my pieces even further to make them as epic as possible. Hey Alicia, hey, uh, you're not busy, are you? Do you wanna help me make some cool art?
Yeah, right? Yeah! Let's do it! All right, that is my first character in the bag. Speaking of bag, I have a Kickstarter I'm launching next week. It's the world's best bag, specifically for creatives. It'll be available in multiple color options that you can choose from. It comes with a removable backpack and shoulder strap mode. I've spent over a year refining this and getting feedback from my vlog audience to make it perfect, and now it's finally ready. And aside from having the color options, it'll also be available in a mini-me option with the same modes, backpack and shoulder strap, or just carry handle mode. So if you want to learn more about the best bag in the world and be notified when the Kickstarter launches, go check out the link in the description. I am very excited and slightly nervous about it, but I absolutely love the bag and I know you will too. So if that sounds interesting to you, go check out the Kickstarter. All right, character one reveal. Are we ready? Kratos. Now Kratos has had a few visual iterations. So the Wikipedia article has to sort of cover a few bases. It's definitely a Nordic vibe. The original God of War games and Kratos was sort of Greek vibe. I guess that it was Kratos based on the face tattoo, but I genuinely feel like I came up with a result that feels both like Kratos, but also really uniquely his own thing. I would love to see my version of Kratos in a video game. This was really fun. Let's do another one. Character two is a young woman. She has brown eyes and auburn hair in a ponytail. She wears a turquoise leotard, light brown shorts, calf high boots, fingerless gloves, and a backpack. She has a utility belt with holsters on either the side, which of course wield two pistols. Take it away. Game on. Now jumping into construction, the description of a young woman makes me think sort of early 20s. If it was younger, I think she'd be described as a teenager or a girl. And given that she's wearing a leotard, typically a dancer's outfit, and wielding guns, she's probably going to be physically fit. Really the trick with this one is to get the pose right, because there's not a lot happening in the details or description of the character. So as you can see, I did quite a bit of reworking to find something that feels video gamey and action oriented, but isn't too over the top. It, it needs to feel organic but still be extreme and or cool enough to fit the context of a video game. So as you can see, I've got the, the bones of this down. That's all the description. To make it stand out, it comes down to pose, which I talked about, and then style. My new favorite ink brush is the Impact Ink. You'll see why as I draw with it. It's just so sharp and crisp and it has a, enough texture that it's epic, but not so much that it's like, oh my God, I'm a texture. As you can see with the line work, less is more. Like it really doesn't take a lot to make a big difference. It really is just all about where the lines go and how they're drawn. So getting that thick to thin look, that looks really satisfying. And that touch of texture doesn't hurt. Aside from what I'm making in this video, you can check out my brushes for yourself and I give a discount to my wonderful viewers, 10% off of my epic digital brush bundle and the how to paint guide is huge. The brushes are multi-program compatible, 83 of the best brushes in the world and you can take your art to the next level with my digital painting brush pack and course. Go check it out, link in the description. Because I have colored guides in my description, it all just comes together really quickly. The turquoise leotard is a really standout feature. It's a design element that really is recognizable. And as soon as that's in, this character just visually stands out and makes a lot of sense. And obviously will be familiar to a lot of people. <laughs> Now I could call this done. And in fact, I'm I'm really happy with this piece. This is like one of the better drawn things I've done in a while. Like I'm really happy with it. So before I hand it off, let me just check I've got everything. Young woman, brown eyes, all bit of hair, ponytail, lose you, low brown shorts, calf high boots, saw I found fingerless gloves, backpack, you do backpack. <gasps> I forgot the backpack. Okay, I'm just gonna leave a note here for Alicia. Uh, backpack. I don't know. I literally didn't follow the description. That I had one job. Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks, Alicia.
This is Lara Croft. Like, there's no question about it. But hey, let's not jump the gun. It is, drum roll please, Lara Croft, there you go. Oh my God. Okay, so these are all the different visual designs of Lara Croft. As you can see with the latest one, they moved away from the shorts and away from the leotard to more of a tank top, which means you can take her more seriously as an action hero. And the origins of her simplistic design really do, as you can see here, come back to the real limitations of working on, was it PlayStation 1? It must have been. So original Tomb Raider, really simple design. It's really interesting to see the development of Lara Croft, but the fact that she is exactly Lara Croft at every stage. I feel like mine fits in that lineup, but feels like mine. And I think that's a victory. And I'm gonna do one more because I'm having so much fun. This is a message to Jazza from the past. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, which you did because we're already editing it, is to draw a man in a red military uniform with large silver shoulder plates arm guards, wristbands, and shin guards. He wears a peaked military cap with skull insignia on it, has neat black hair under his cap, and is wearing a dark cape. Sounds like someone who would be really difficult to make conversation with at the dinner table, depending on your politics. Good luck. I, I, I don't think I know this one. Okay, cool, let's see where we end up. I'm gonna do the, the real yuck version first, just cause I need to see what all this stuff looks like. This is gonna be my guide, but it's just gonna be like the children's crayon drawing version. Okay, I think that I think I got a cup. Oh no, wait, I need a skull. There he is. What a cute little villain, I guess. I I think I've got. I think that's it. I think that lit that's literally everything. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll shrink him, put him over the side there, and draw the cool version of it. Now I could just follow my little proportions of the man one to one and I'd end up with a coolish looking character, but the design of this seems pretty goofy, seems really characterful and old school. And based on the design and how sort of campy it is, it feels like this is probably gonna be a little bit more of a retro or classic game. Maybe this character was designed so intensely, vibrantly to stand out with the pixel art aesthetic or something. So with that in mind, I wanted to create a, an interpretation of this character in my style, but in a way that stands out in a really characterful way. And with the design raft in, really, honestly, all these features came together pretty quickly. Like the Lara Croft one, it really doesn't take a lot of design elements to be described for it to really clearly come together once you've got them put down. So then it was a matter of adding color. I think this villain is looking epic. But there's a few finishing touches I wanna add. A glowing effect in Photoshop and I was having fun here. I saw this as an opportunity, especially with that glowing effect, to add some sharp, hot electric lightning. Now I've taken this as far as I can today, but that doesn't mean that's as far as this is gonna go because if there's anything I've learned, Alicia can always surprise me with how far she can take what I start with. Take it away, Alicia. Now of the three characters, this is the one I am least confident I know who it is, but I'm gonna guess someone from, I think the Street Fighter series is coming to mind. And the character is M. Bison, I don't know his name. It's M. Bison, but it is the guy from Street Fighter. Now I'm super glad I went in the direction I went in because I mean, let's face it, there's a lot of big buff macho like video game characters. I, I like mine more, I think it's way more fun. I would love to see my M. Bison in Street Fighter. But you let me know, would you prefer to play in Street Fighter as this version of M. Bison? I don't know what it's, M. Bison? Mr. Bison. Or mine, who feels way more Bison-esque. 
to, to me. These results in this video are some I'm most proud of. Like they're so fun. And Alicia did an amazing job helping me. Give her a bit of love in the comments. And of course, if you want to paint like Alicia or draw like me, check out our digital brushes. And it's a huge support to the channel and helps us support big videos like this and helps me hire artists like Alicia to make the videos even better. Let me know what other characters or themes I could do from the descriptions. Cause let's face it, these are basically character design sessions like the good old days, but they actually get views and they're a lot of fun and I can take them really far. That is it for now. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you later.